Hey there, welcome back to Total Geek Live, Baltimore Presents, I'm Baltimore, and today I'm bringing you back to the 1991 Annuals and the Kings of Pain crossover event. Um, so let me just tell you a little bit of how Annuals used to work. It was a lot of fun. They were basically produced kind of in the summertime, um, and they were oversized issues that had one main story that kind of covered in through, you know, a collection of three or four uh, Annuals storyline. And then you had little backup stories that were kind of helpful to fill out uh, some of the other things, some up-and-coming uh, creators and so forth, or kind of carry on other little backup stories, uh, which was really kind of cool. Um, so in 1991, you have Kings of Pain, and this takes place in New, uh, New Mutants num Annual Number 7, New Warriors Annual Number 1, uh, X -Men, Uncanny X-Men Annual 15, and uh, X Factor Annual Six. Um, so in this time period, uh, what we have basically is the New Mutants are done. That issue one hundred, they disbanded. They're going to be soon to be seen as X Force. Uh, so this is the basically kind of the first appearance of X Force. Um, last appearance was issue one hundred of New Mutants, and then the first one is X Force One. This kind of takes place in between them. Uh, so you have that classic lineup, which is so awesome. You have Cable, and you have Domino, Cannonball, Boom Boom, uh, Shatterstar, Warpath, Feral. Great, great lineup. So they're in it. Then you have the New Warriors, which is a classic lineup. Awesome. Um, which is Nova, Night Thrasher, Namorita, Marvel Boy, Firestar, uh, Speedball, and Silhouette. Um, so great classic team. Love them, love them, love them. And they're actually meeting up with the New Mutants X-Force for the first time. So it's so cool. Then you have, on the Uncanny X-Men side, you have not the X-Men because they're off in space at this time. Um, you have the Muir Island X-Men, which is basically Moira, uh, Polaris. You have uh, Strong Guy. You have Medrox. You have Siren, who will soon be hopping over to the X-Force team. Um, you have Rogue as well. So that's the team over there, Legion. Um, and then you have X-Factor, which is basically the O5. Uh, Cyclops, hey, uh, Angel, Beast, Iceman, Marvel Girl, Jean Grey. Um, and they're the team that's, that's in. And so these are the four titles that uh, coalesce the Kings of Pain uh, storyline. Um, it's actually really kind of fun and cool. The art was not super great. There's, you know, in annuals, you kind of get this mixed bag of like one... Uh, issue of it. It's going to be really good. The next one's going to be like, not so good. So you just kind of take it as, as it comes. You know, you, you can't really be, you know, as choosy, unfortunately. Um, but it was still a lot of fun. It was a great storyline, great, interesting, because you get a lot of first character interactions that were really, really great and really wonderful to read and ex experience. Um, so the, the premise of this uh, Kings of Pain storyline is uh, terrorist organization AIM, bad guys, and Gene Tech are going to try to um, resurrect Proteus, because um, that's always a good idea. Now, Proteus, if you don't know, is Moira Taggart's son, mutant son, who has uh, reality-bending disruption powers. Uh, really, really crazy, bad, uh, unstable. And she had kept him in a, a containment unit um, most of his life, and then the X-Men find out about it, and there's a battle, and um, Colossus ends up killing him uh, because his weakness is metal, and Colossus is metal. And so that kind of stops and, and defeats him and gets him you know, taken off the board. Well, in their genius move, AIM and uh, Gene Tech try to resurrect him, um, and they are going to try to send a mutant who can absorb energy, eat energy, basically, and they're sending him off with Harness, who is his, uh, uh, basically, you know, captor, um, with, like, a leash. It was really bad. Um, sending him to spots where they find energy and have him eat it so that he can, you know, basically reinvent himself as Proteus. Um, he's in a, he's a kid from a broken home. I think he's actually at a halfway home. Um, when we first find him, the Alliance of Evil is teamed up with Harness to also, you know, best them out. Um, and that's when the New Mutants come in, X-Force comes in, 
and tries to stop the battle. Uh, they are too late, uh, and they end up trying, following the trail to the next stop, and that's where they meet up with the new warriors. That's right. And so, of course, as all you know, superheroes meeting other superheroes for the first time do, there's a battle between them. Um, and that was really cool. Great, great fun team-ups and, and, you know, uh, playing off each other, which is really cool. I like that a lot. Um, and, of course, they realize that they are not the enemies, and they come to terms and they actually kind of uh, figure out how they need to team up to stop what's going on. They realize now that what they are trying to do is actually um, resurrect Proteus. So they know they need to go to Muir Island. And so they head off to Muir Island. And uh, that's where they find Mara McTaggart. And at this point, these, these X-Men there are kind of uh, compromised, to say the least. They are... Um, uh, affected by the Shadow King, and it's you know not very good. They're not very pleasant to be around. But they also kind of have to you know do what they need to do to kind of protect their cover. So New Mutants, actually X Force, New Warriors, and the Near Islanders um, team up to try to stop uh, Proteus uh, being reborn because Muir uh, Mor Mor Taggart is there and. Um, so they all go to try to stop him. They realize the last piece of Proteus is in Edinburgh, Scotland. And so they go there. Um, and then you have Legion, Marvel Boy, uh, Firestar, Speedball, Multiple Man, and Moira all trying to combine all their powers to, to you know, suck the energy out. Basically, you know, cr cancel uh, piecemeal's um, energy absorption. But what ends up actually happening is... They combine. Peacemill and Proteus combine and are, you know, one full bad, bad character. He's, Proteus has risen from the dead and he is not enjoying this. It's a lot of craziness. Um, and then that's when X-Factor comes in because they've come in to help save the day. And as of, you know, they've fought uh, Proteus before. So they know, oh, if we need to stop Proteus, we need to do metal. And then it's in this you know, great moment with Beast and Proteus when uh, he hits him with this, these metal gauntlets. And he realizes, um, yeah, metal's not, not going to do it anymore. Um, so that was kind of cool. You're like, oh, they need to find another way. Um, and so Proteus is you know, realizing he's alive and all this anger and angst and uh, confusion and, and, and all these emotions are happening to him. And he has to realize what's going on and the teams all together decide the only way to really stop him is to have him peacefully surrender himself to death again because that was his only peaceful place and there's some really good comments actually from cable um asking that saying that you know maybe he should be given a second chance um which is kind of interesting because at this point nobody knows that cable is actually uh cyclops's son with madeline Pryor. Um, so that hasn't been revealed yet. So that's, you know, kind of an interesting, you know, little, uh, insight to the character before you kind of know what's going on. Um, and also interestingly enough, Cord, who is one of the advisors or, you know, um, leaders to New Warriors calls Cable Winters, uh, which is a play on Summers. Um, so that's kind of like if you, you know, now reading back on it, you're like, oh, 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 I see what you're doing with your aliases there, Cable. Um, but it was a really fun storyline. It was really cool because, like I said, this is the first actual real appearance of X-Force um, in between New Mutants 100 and X-Force number one. So that's kind of cool. You even have Sam Cannonball commenting on it. X-Force. Hmm. Um, you know, nod and a wink to the, to the audience there. Uh, and yet, you know, you have the new warriors in the X-Force meeting for the first time, um, which is going to be really cool because later on they're going to be involved in Child's Play, uh, which is another storyline that gets them, uh, to meet up again and team up again. Um, so that's really kind of cool. Um, and kind of at the end of this, you realize that, Gideon, uh, who is an external, who is X-Force's kind of bad guy, uh, one of X-Force's bad guys, and Toad, who has now kind of evolved himself into kind of a smart um, 
evil guy, um, are playing chess. And this has kind of like then been their game, trying to just see what's going on and being very um, malicious. Um, you see the beginnings of Toad's uh, Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, which will come back in um, X-Force uh, a little bit later on. So that's kind of cool to see that kind of, you know, coalesce and happen and, and, and bring to the forefront of, uh, of, the, of the story. So it was really kind of cool to kind of get all that in an annual. I really wish we could get more annuals like that now. Uh, but now the annuals aren't even really supersized, uh, which is a shame. It's just kind of another, you know, oh, here's like a 13th story. When annuals back in the day used to be an event. It's an annual. Now everyone gets an annual even if they don't make it up to, you know, issue 12. Which is kind of like, that's that's not how that works. Um, but I really did love Kings of Pain. You can get this in collection. You can find it um, in a couple of places. Uh, it's a pretty good read. It's fun. You'll see some interesting teamwork there. Kind of like classing back to the childhood of you. Um, so it's actually pretty good, pretty good and I would suggest you take a look at it. But let me know what your favorite part of Kings of Pain. Have you read it yet? Let me know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and share. And as always, it's all geek to us. And I'll be back soon.